Hello, it's Scott Manley here with how to train your rocket, specifically how to make your rocket steer through the depths of space. We're going to talk about the mechanism that Kerbal Space Program provides for making sure the rocket points in the correct version. Because as we all know, if your engines point to space, you will not go. If your po engines point to the sky, you will not go to space today. <laughs> That's the famous quote from Upgoer 5, the most magnificent ex-KCD comic where they tried to explain the Saturn V using only the thousand most common words in the English language. So I just have a capsule here, and this is to illustrate there is one basic function in, in the capsule that uh, every capsule has, and that is reaction wheels. If I push the ro if I push the buttons, it wants to move. I can spin it around, right round, baby, like a record, baby, right round. Yes, and that is from that's called the magic torque. I say it, it, they call it reaction wheels, but real world reaction wheels aren't don't generally work like that. There's a lot of things that don't quite work in the same way. But regardless, it's good enough for our purposes. Almost every vehicle with a capsule or space probe body will provide reaction torque. Now, uh, you can actually disable this by clicking toggle torque, and if I push the buttons, nothing happens. If I turn it back on again, it works, wants to move. Now, notice it is using an electric charge. This is important. Many old rockets and things built before 0.21 do not have solar power or any power supply, and therefore they will find themselves unable to rotate, uh, dead in space, if they uh, use too much rotation. So, if you're flying an older rocket, be aware you may have a budget during which you can control your spacecraft. So we switch to the vehicle assembly building, again. Now, capsules contain this, space probes contain this, the external command seat does not contain it, so you need to pair that up with a probe body if you want to control things. Also, under the control menu, we now have three items, which were the former SAS and SAS units. These all provide reaction torque, and so you can apply them to other spacecraft. Let's actually do them in order. The the 2 meter one on the initial release didn't include it, but wisely that was very quickly added. The only one that doesn't contain it is the avionics package. That just provides SAS at this time. So if I go and launch this, we should get an even more powerful, spinny, whirling dervish of doom. We should just attach blades to it or something and turn it into a Kerbal weapon for their gladiatorial arenas. And you can tell that I am trying to fill time because this thing is taking forever to load. Yes, there we go. And watch, this, watch the charge go down this time. Okay, well that's not so bad. Yay, look at that. Whoa! Ah, there. Okay, well, so much for that. <laughs> well, that was short-lived, but Jebediah seems to be enjoying himself. So let's go back to the vehicle assembly building. Okay, so what we're going to do now is demonstrate reaction control systems. Now, reaction control thrusters are basically little engines that push the spacecraft around. They're under the control menu. You have the linear version and you have the four port version right it's a thruster block most of the time you're going to be using the thruster block but you can place these ones if you like they use mono propellant which in the real world is something like hydrazine or peroxide which when you pass them over a heated catalyst they decompose into a gas uh, into multiple gases so i'm going to do this i'm making something that's um symmetric from a symmetry from a center of mass standpoint so i've got to make this set up just right. It's going to take a little bit of poking around. Um, so I got that. I want to put linear ports along the middle. Right, I'm going to put four linear ports here. And I'm going to put the RCS blocks here and here. And that should be a functioning spacecraft that I can use for testing. It's not going to be able to take off on its own, unfortunately. We're going to need to use the we're going to need to use the um, gravity hacks. Gravity hacks, gravity hacks. Don't we love your gravity hacks? Uh, that's available under Alt F12 because everybody always asks. And I know all of you know, but there's a lot of people who don't know. And this is a tutorial, so Alt F12 is very useful for the debug menu and stuff. So if I go in and bring in hack gravity, we should have a spacecraft, which now 
Well, it wants to rotate because I've got the torque enabled. If I toggle the torque and disable it, it just sits there no matter how I push it. Press R to turn on reaction control systems and it rotates just fine. That's great. We are now airborne and we have a system which works. Now, the when you press the turn buttons, you're going to use uh, mono propellant. You see we've already used some here. We skipped up a little. One other thing the reaction control uh, system offers is translation. That means if you have push H and N, J, K and L and I, all these buttons move it in different directions. So H moves it forwards, N moves it down, J and L translate it in the Y to X direction, and this translate and I and K translate in the Y direction. So you can, you know, fly around like this works very nicely in zero-g environment but it's especially important if you are docking because then you need to adjust your docking port and everything get everything lined up now one other thing to be to be interested in here is that you pretty much have to put these things in based upon the center of mass and everything yourself right if you don't get things lined up perfectly then you will get rotations happening and so what i'm going to do here is take the fuel from one tank and transfer it into the other and that will move our center of mass down now when i try to translate we start to rotate you see that so this is something you can correct to a certain extent with the asas it will fire the vertical thrusters and hopefully you'll maintain some control but it's something to be aware of is that if you don't put your thrusters at the center of mass then you will have trouble similarly i can actually go in and disable these ports and let's just do this imagine somebody's built a really terrible version the linear ones are like five times more powerful whereas the thruster blocks are less powerful but there's four of them so they'll give you you know you need fewer of them so here we go now oh i'm missing what one's fire that one's still firing disable so now if i try to translate you see that the rotation is is much more pronounced right in fact if you noticed previously the rotation was happening in the opposite direction but now i've shifted the thrusters below the center of mass we rotate much faster i think this one is still that's still enabled there we go so that will get in your way you need to make sure you put these near to the center of mass or you can can have trouble translating these things around let's just see if again if i turn on the sas you see this extra thrust coming down here to keep me rotated in the correct direction very important uh, let's we can exaggerate this effect even more now by transferring the fuel upwards into this upper tank translate it in here or transfer it in here and things will move even faster so it's, it's basically when you're designing your spacecraft if you're going to be docking and using translation you need to be very careful and think about not just the center of mass but also the center of mass as it will be when you're actually docking and it becomes harder when you actually dock two spacecraft together and they have different masses and you know you've got same amount different thrust and different masses and you're trying to maneuver that as a single unit because that's generally not possible to balance this there that's a little better balance again if you turn it off it still wants to rotate but it doesn't it doesn't decrease the thrust on this one and increase the thrust on this one to compensate not yet that would be a really nice feature to have and there are mods which do rcs balancing but at the moment you just have to do that yourself okay that this way and there we go just hover it down onto the surface this is gravity is almost like you're on gilly just for your know, reference look at oh wow those are like the giant train tracks or whatever they use to bring the stuff to the launch pad that must mean they're like the russians because the americans used um they didn't use train tracks they used uh giant crawlers anyway Let's go on to the next thing. Okay, so for the next demonstration, I'm going to use show thrust vectoring. Now, I'm going to use a slightly different design here. I'm going to use one that uses a jet engine for now. We'll just put a jet air intake on top. We're going to 
bring up the jet fuel and yes I know this one is more efficient than this one but uh, it looks better at this time so I'll stick on the basic jet engine now you see basic jet engine underneath the flame out threshold down or at I can't use a pointer damn it yes it has vectoring thrust vectoring enabled vectoring range that is a um, that basically allows the thrust to deviate off center and provide torque not all engines have it the skipper has it but the lv t30 does not have it whereas the t45 does and you see that the lv t30 gets a maximum thrust of 215 whereas the t45 only gets 200 and uh, otherwise they're you know essentially the same well they're this one is the slightly lighter and gets more thrust so by doing away with the thrust vectoring it gets a more powerful engine essentially but anyway let's um put some landing legs on this as well let's put the hefty ones on because we all know that controlling jet engines is incredibly you know dodgy so let's try launching this and we'll demonstrate this in flight um so yeah control you know you basically what happens is the thrust is coming out and either the nozzle is moving or in some cases some vehicles have vanes that go into the exhaust and turn it that was a concept that's been applied in the past in the past like the space shuttle for example has the entire engine no, engine bell and it moves around in fact it has to do this during launch because the center of mass shifts and to keep the space shuttle flying straight you need to keep the uh, the thrust pointing along the center of mass. Okay, so here we have a vehicle sitting in the launch pad. I'm going to toggle the torque. I'm going to disable the reaction wheels. And so for now we're going to try flying this using only the thrust vectoring that we get from the basic engine. So let's fire up the engine and get some thrust on here and see how well we can do this. Um, probably should figure out thrust is coming up, but it may not be enough to lift us up. Let's just touch it up a little more it's very hard to tell how much I need here oh just about just about come on I'm doing this very carefully because if you do it too fast you'll just literally fly off okay so here we go and you see the nozzle moving in here if you're very careful you can see the nozzle move as I I try to steer this so I go this way and I go this way so many of the rocket engines offer offer that and you can use that to help yourself during liftoff it also will help when you're in space the problem really is when you're using it in space is that you need to be firing your engine and that means you're pretty much thrusting in whatever direction your engine is you're already pointing so this is totally working just using the thrust of the engine it's not using any torque from the capsule or anything else let's try let's just try landing it oh yes vertical speed is increasing rather more rapidly than I'd like in fact it's still increasing come on more thrust oh dear this could be bad this could be bad we're coming down too fast oh uh, ah, come on. Oh, dear, 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 dear. It's not wanting to... Hey, crash. Okay. Well, yeah, so there you go. There you get the exact thing. That, that as I was trying to power down my engines to land, the the thrust was of course dropping and so was the control and of course I was starting to roll over at that point so the control didn't help me and that's one of the, the side effects of this. Okay, so we've demonstrated thrust vectoring as a control system. Now let's demonstrate aerodynamics. Aerodynamics, of course, being the system which uh, lets you... Well, let's let's do this. Oh, actually, no, let's use the aerospike. The aerospike is a great engine for liftoff and takeoff, but it does not... It provides lots of thrust, but it does not provide thrust vectoring. It also provides very good specific impulse. So we'll just stick a parachute on the front of this because I'm not completely suicidal. Now, under the aerodynamics menu, you have all sorts of things to help you steer the spacecraft. I'm just, just going to use these winglets here. Typically, you want at least three. Four is a good number. And, well, let's take a look at this. We have center of lift versus the center of mass. Not actually going to work okay what will happen is as we burn this fuel the center of mass may move back and forth but this thing should fly relatively well let's let's launch it and see how well we do okay so here we are on the launch pad let's disable the 
cabin torque again, just so we know we're only steering. You, there's no torque on this. There's only the aerodynamics. Now, if we fire up the engine, we are moving. We don't ha You can see the wings moving, but they don't turn so fast. But as I pick up speed, they will very quickly provide much more a thought control here. You see that? And rotation and everything. And this is all from a system which doesn't have any... Um, the only control is coming from those flaps. Now, of course, the aerodynamics in Kerbal Space Program are of, well, dubious quality at this time. They were really kind of thrown together in a very short time, and there's all sorts of fascinating bugs and exploits. But uh, if you really want to get into aerodynamics, and you will if you're flying space planes, you can download the Ferrum Aerospace Research mod, which improves things no end. Now, I'm going to try putting this thing into reverse, which is actually very hard using aerodynamics, but it is going to be possible. So now I've got it in reverse, at least it's somewhat stable. Uh, if your center of mass, if your center of lift versus your center of mass is too far di uh, different, then you will probably not be able to put it into reverse. Or you'll probably have, yeah, it'll probably either be too stable or too unstable and you won't be able to do this. But uh, if you get it just right, like this one, then I am reversing onto the surface and I should be able to land this without the use of a parachute. You see that they've actually reversed the control surfaces uh, as I've gone into reverse, and that's a very useful thing. Although it's kind of interesting to see zombie flaps changing their control surface direction after they've fallen off the spacecraft. Okay, let's start killing the velocity here. We want to try and come down relatively quickly. Oh, excellent. Ha 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 ha! Brilliant! There, successful landing, and the only control surfaces were the the only controls were the surfaces on the rocket itself. Now uh, let's see what happens if you uh, mess up your center of mass. So what we have here is a little space plane sitting on top of a booster rocket, and this is an illustration of a pitfall of aerodynamics. Specifically, I've purposely put the center of mass behind the center of lift. And this thing will not fly well because it is unstable. So we're coming up, uh, and we're starting to go off center, and and I can't get it back on center. So this is a perfect example of what not to do with control surfaces. You see, what we've done is we've moved the center of lift way in front of the center of mass, so we are unstable and therefore it is very hard for us to control this thing. I'm doing my best to keep this nose up, but that may be something of a losing battle. As we go faster and faster, the forces get higher, and as we come off center, we lose control essentially. But look, we're actually gonna get this thing flying not too, not too badly. Okay, let's fire this up. And this one is proving a little harder to fly, but it is flying nonetheless. Excellent. Maybe I can... I wonder if I can get this thing into a re reverse situation. The, the, this one, actually, unlike unlike the uh, Aerospike version, does not want to turn its nose up because the center the center of lift is actually aft of the center of mass so let's try and get rid of some of that mass oh i fear we may not we may be having trouble here and uh, yeah with that kerbal reaching his ending i think we've reached the end of this video there will be a part two where i demonstrate all of these technologies on a single launch vehicle but until then i'm scott manley fly safe